the water. That's okay. Sometimes I like to wet them more just to accentuate the whole thing. Okay, Just to help us with the fact or to see where I'm intending this, this darkness to be, right? Of course, when I start working with the blue eye, they don't have to dry it. But you see that here is this great light, here is this great darkness, right? And now Goethe points out that when you enlighten or illumine the darkness, that's where the pure blue arises. Okay. So let's put our blue here, place it, paint it in, and it will come out of the darkness. A little bit of muddy in here, but it will dry up and then we can strengthen it. So these are not really good enough. Uh, we should have paints, but again, I wouldn't want to. So we have the great light, we have the great darkness. These, as Goethe says, he knows the color uh, phenomena uh, is as old as the world is. Right? In other words, he, Goethe, had, was the first one to formulate, to investigate, to formulate <coughs> the phenomena in a more modern time of the dynamic between light and dark and how the colors arise out of that. Okay, so we've, we've come to establish this great polarity of light and dark, of yellow and blue. So, this is what Goethe calls, he, in his terminology, as, as his transit, his duality, right? Or polarity. This is something we've heard before. The first principle, of course, is wholeness. You know, how does, how does uh, everything in nature, from an organic conception or perception or experience, is that everything is integrated into a oneness. Colors are a part of life. They're not a separate thing. They're not added to. So architects that don't include color, what's wrong with them? Right? That's why I'm so pleased to meet Bert because he he understood, I think from the beginning, that color and architecture belong together. And those who are somewhat familiar with the Giratiano impulse, this is very strongly evident through colored glass, through painting, uh, through materials. So, you know, something that we need all to learn more about. Okay, so um, let's just do jot down here so that we keep them all in mind. Before there was any existence, according to the Tao, there was non-being. <coughs> Nothing material, completely spirit. Actually, well, it's more spiritual than we can even imagine. Right? That's what I think that is intended by the, the, the idea of non-being. And then out of this non-being <coughs> was the first principle, wholeness. Whatever non-being created it was intended to be a oneness, right? It was in, in the um, outline of esoteric science, Steiner describes the evolution of the cosmos, of our planetary system, of the, uh, the incarnations of the Earth, how it came out of the spirit and started to into, uh, incarnate, right? And the human being became more and more focused this, whereas now we've learned that going too deeply into this narrow point is killing us. So Goethe is beginning the people who think in this way, where they're 
biodynamic farmer, educationalist in the world movement, uh, in banking, in medicine, and to think in a new way, and to change our thinking. Right? So a experiential uh, approach to life, I believe, is going to tell us, make it clearer for us, that we need to see things in a much more organic way, organic wholeness, and that there will be some new flow, right? New flow in life. Bring more harmony. So let's intensify. Let's intensify, enhance the warm side. It seems, I think, pretty natural. We could do experiments to see what is more natural, but I think you might agree with me that orange belongs together, kind of arm in arm, with the yellow. Right? <coughs> kind of a partner. And on the other side, out of the blue, out of the blue, then we can intensify, bring more. Warmth, so we approach more violet, right? Intensification more in strength to this side here. You see where we're going, right? Mm -hmm. All right. This is where we begin to experience, at least in, in a simple diagram like this. Uh, one side is more a warm reddish. This is coming out of the cool side. So every color has a relationship. Even within orange, there's a cool and warm side. Within the yellow, there's a cool and warm side. And we're still talking about pure color. We're not talking about a color that becomes more earthbound. Browns and so on. Never. This is more spectral, if you will. And we could finish this off, but let's just before we get to the our goal, let's turn to the opposite side. Right. This is where the mixing will occur. between the light of heaven and the darkness of nature, if you will. Green, very natural. So, I may, uh, in this evening, if we have time, I will indicate a little bit about the classroom coloring uh, based on the rainbow. We're going to talk, talk a little bit more from the zodiac point of view too. Um, Goethe, of course, did not you know, get so deeply uh, 
into this kind of esoteric work with the zodiac. He was interested in the phenomena of life. And that's what he could genuinely, honestly, only uh, share. Whereas, of course, Steiner had the advantage of uh, a deeper uh, insight. But again, Rudolf Steiner's work did emerge or was born out of his familiarity right into the details of Goethe's work in color and many other fields. I'm, I'm guessing that there are some people here who may be relatively new to these things, so I'm sorry if some of you feel it's too elementary. But it's, al it's always good to kind of refresh, even if we know something. Okay, so this is uh, very sketchy, but I think uh, I'm, I'm hoping that my point comes across for points plural. Okay, so this is the crown, if you will, of, of the color circle where the highest dynamic comes to a culmination, right, red. Um, in the prism, it will, you could call it magenta. It's a pure purple, uh, deep pink, you could say. Um, so I will try uh, soon now to, uh, we'll take this away and I will also indicate a possibility showing how the uh, magenta, how it, it, it uh, gives birth to peach blossom. Though, uh, as Steiner says, peach blossom really does not exist in the physical world, but it, it can give us an idea of what feeling it is. I'll actually take some words of this. So we've uh, this, we've worked now with uh, polarity, metamorphosis. This is a key word, perhaps the most important that Goethe contributed to modern culture. How does one uh, form, whether it's physical form or um, color even, how does it transform into something different, new? Perhaps the I Ching had something to say about that, because that was about change, right? About evolving change, that things go through cyclical, rhythmical evolution. So, I think what's happening here is that there is a resurrection, if you will, of these ancient, uh, this ancient knowledge. It's, it's a pretty astounding, I believe, to, to think about it. In intervals, stage lighting, the rhythmic drama, all of these things are going to be heightened to a new degree when we work with them in a conscious way, in a social effort. The third of the, what we could say, of the Gertian laws, laws of the organic world. Weidensteiner called Goethe the founder of a new science of aesthetics uh, as the father of organic science because he discovered these laws. He was almost alone. Very few people understood him. Many thought he was crazy. Uh, when it came to color theory, or color lessons as I call his, um, nobody really understood. I mean, very few people. The Newtonian um, scientists thought he was out to lunch, and he still thinks he is. To this day, all design schools, art schools, elementary 
and grade schools and high schools still teach Newtonian uh, color, that all colors arise out of light. What about the darkness? It's, it's, a, it's a power. It's a, it's, a, it's a necessary element in creation. Okay, polarity, metamorphosis, and enhancement. 